Hello, and welcome. I am Exit Light, and this is my channel. Today I'm going to tell you about a horrible, true crime. A crime in which the victim went for 44 years without being identified. He was brutally murdered. And we're going to talk about that today. If you would please give this video a thumbs up, I would greatly appreciate it. It does a lot for my channel. If you would like to donate, there's a link below that you can use to donate. Only if you feel like it, you don't have to. And if you would like to subscribe, please do so. Click that button so you know when my content is going live. All right, now that the housekeeping is out of the way, let's talk about this case. This is the murder of a man who was known for 44 years only as Sectic Tank Sam. It had come to be known that his name was actually Gordon Edwin Sanderson. He was called Gordy. His remains were identified in January of 2021. Then it took six months later for it to be revealed to the public, and the investigation into his homicide is still ongoing. Sanderson was born in Manitoba on October 22, 1950. Police stated that Sanderson was part of what they called the 60s scoop in which the police and child care system were allowed to go into indigenous folks' homes and remove their children and put them into foster care. This happened to him when he was nine years old. He struggled with addictions and had various run-ins with the police. In the 1970s, he was living in Edmonton and had planned to visit his brother Arthur in Calgary. Sanderson was found wearing a blue Levi's shirt with snap buttons a gray t-shirt, blue jeans, and imitation wallaby shoes. His decomposed body was wrapped in a yellow bedsheet and tied with nylon rope. Sanderson was found by a local couple scavenging their abandoned property for a septic tank pump. After seeing his leg bobbing in their old septic tank, they alerted the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Two officers came to the scene to recover Sanderson's body, where they spent an hour emptying the deep septic tank with empty ice cream pails. The man had been mutilated and tortured. A medical examiner in Edmonton determined Sanderson to be Caucasian. His bones and teeth suggested he suffered from an unspecified illness at five years old. Sanderson's cause of death was two gunshots to the head and chest, although it was possible there could have been more if any of the bullets did not reach his skeleton. Before his death, Sanderson had been tortured. He had been beaten. He had been tied up. He had been burned with small butane torch and cigarettes. And he had been mutilated in parts of the body that we can't talk about here with sharp objects. That particular mutilation was so severe that the medical examiner took several months to positively identify him as a male. Based on the burn marks on his shirt sleeves, Sanderson could have been tied to a bed while tortured. The weapons used to mutilate Sanderson could not be conclusively determined due to the condition of the remains, although the medical examiner suspected the use of farm shears. After Sanderson's death, he had been covered in quicklime, most likely in a mistaken attempt to hasten his decomposition. Authorities suspected that he was not from Alberta, but was probably a migrant worker. Due to a lack of evidence in the septic tank, Sanderson was most likely murdered elsewhere and the septic tank was only a dump site. Sanderson's murderers are believed to have known him due to how viciously he had been killed. It is also suspected that Sanderson's murderers were toll-filled locals or were familiar with the area due to the location of Sam's dump site being on a rural property. Sanderson's body had to be removed from his unmarked grave in an Edmonton cemetery two times. In 1979, Sanderson's remains were flown to Clyde Snow and Betty Pat Gatliff, forensic anthropologists and medical illustrators at the Federal Aviation Administration in Oklahoma. They had been creating 3D facial composites from skulls since 1967. 
Along with creating a facial composite for Sanderson, the two could tell by measuring his hands that he was right-handed. Snow believed Sanderson to be of indigenous origin and around 35 years old, contradicting the Royal Canadian Mounted Police's belief of Sanderson being Caucasian and being between 26 and 32 years old. In 2000, Sanderson was exhumed and reconstructed for the second time by Cyril Chan, who was the Edmonton Medical Examiner's Office at the time. The 1,200 residents of Toefield at the time were horrified to hear of Sanderson's murder. Farmers began to check their own septic tanks for bodies, and business owners worried that Sanderson's murder might have been a regular customer. Many speculated that Sam had been that type of mutilated due to committing a certain kind of crime or being unfaithful in a relationship. Ed Lamertz, one of the officers who helped to recover his body, has since retired, but he believes Sanderson would never be identified despite sending x-rays of Sam's teeth to 800 Albertan dentists, coupled with publishing them in dental magazines and spending $1 million CAD on the case. On June 29, 2021, it was reported that the remains had been identified via genetic genealogy 44 years after his discovery. Police had submitted DNA results to Othram, Inc., a private laboratory in the Woodlands, Texas, and identified Sam on January 21st, after which the case became an active homicide investigation. On June 30th, Alberta's Royal Canadian Mounted Police publicly identified Sam in a virtual press conference as Gordon Edwin Sanderson, a 26-year-old indigenous man from Manitoba who was living in Edmonton at the time of his death. The last time Sanderson had spoken to his family, he had mentioned that he was going to visit his brother in Calgary. Sanderson's older sister gave her DNA, which was used to confirm his identity. This case is still open, and if anybody knows anything, if you ever heard a neighbor, older neighbor, a grandfather, an uncle, talk about something strange that you wrote off as crazy or fantastical or alcohol, please go ahead and give the Royal Canadian Mounted Police a phone call. Thank you for coming. Good night.